positive cases in the country. This decision was taken with the agreement of all local leaders, and I am grateful to the leader and officers of Leicestershire County Council and to the officers of Leicester City Council for their support and continued hard work. Since then, we have doubled testing in the city and through a monumental programme of communications and community engagement, we have been pushing our important messages. I committed to reviewing the measures in Leicester every two weeks. This morning I chaired a gold meeting of the Local Action Committee to discuss the latest situation. And this afternoon I held a further meeting with local leaders, Public Health England, the JBC, the Local Resilience Forum and my clinical advisers. The latest data show that the seven-day infection rate in Leicester is now 119 cases per 100,000 people and that the percentage of people who have tested positive is now at 4.8%. These are positive indicators, especially in light of the huge increase in testing in the local area. But they still remain well above the national average and the average for surrounding areas. Thanks to the incredible efforts of people in Leicester who followed the lockdown, even whilst others across the country have had their freedoms relaxed, we have, we're now in a position to relax some, but not all, of the restrictions that were in place. So, from the 24th of July, we'll be removing the restrictions on schools and early years childcare, and taking a more targeted approach to the restrictions on non-essential retail, replacing the national decision to close non-essential retail with a local power to close them where necessary. This is all part of our more targeted approach. However, other restrictions, like those for travel and only having social gatherings of up to six people, for example, were, will remain in force. And measures introduced on the 4th of July, like reopening the hospitality sector, will also not yet apply. The initial definition of the geography covered by the lockdown was a decision I delegated to Leicestershire County Council and they made and published. The leader of Leicestershire County Council, Nicholas Rushton, has advised me, based on the data and the best public health advice, that he recommends these restrictions now apply only to the Oadby and Wigston area of Leicestershire as well as the city of Leicester itself, and I have accepted his advice. Some say that the local lockdown is unnecessary. I wish this were true. But sadly, it may, remains vital for the health of everyone in Leicester and the rest of the country that these restrictions stay in place. We will review them again in a fortnight. I hope that this careful easing of restrictions will provide some comfort to people in Leicester and Leicestershire. And I'd say this directly to people of Leicester and of Leicestershire, I pay tribute to you all. Your perseverance and your hard work has brought real and tangible results, and you've shown respect for one another. I understand this hasn't been easy. Strong representations have been made to me by my honourable friends, the members for Charmwood, Harborough and South Leicestershire, and for the members opposite who represent the City of Leicester. On behalf of constituents who have been impacted, the constituents who wanted to see the lockdown lifted too, however, there is still a lot to do, and the public health messages remain critical. So please, get a test if you have symptoms. Keep following the rules that are in place. Please do not lose your resolve, because the sooner we get this virus under control, the sooner we can restore life in Leicester and across the country to normal. Mr Speaker, this statement also gives me the opportunity to inform the House of an issue relating to testing. We have identified some swabs that are not up to the usual high standard that we expect, and we will be carrying out further testing of this batch. As a precautionary measure, and while we investigate further, we are requesting that the use of these Randox swab test kits are paused in all settings until further notice. This problem was brought to my attention yesterday afternoon. We contacted settings using these swabs last night and published the pause notice immediately. Clinical advice is that there is no evidence of any harm, that test results are not affected, there is no evidence of issues with any of our other test swabs, and there is no impact on access to testing. Mr Speaker, our ability to take action on this local level 
in Leicester is the keystone of our plan to defeat the coronavirus. So we can keep this virus on the run and defeat it once and for all. I'm grateful to you for allowing me to make a statement at this time, and I commend the statement of the House. Shadow Secretary of State Jonathan Ashworth to reply. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr Speaker, just before turning to Leicester, could the Secretary of State perhaps update the House and, and comment on Patrick, Sir Patrick Francis's remarks at SAGE? Who advised today, or, or said Sage, I beg your pardon, who, who at the Select Committee advised that Sage had advised the government to implement lockdown measures as soon as possible on the 16th of March. So, why did it take a further seven days for the government to implement lockdown if Sage was advising on the 16th of March? Um, can I start by putting on record my thanks to the City Council and all the health officials, particularly our Director of Public Health, Ivan Brown, for all the work they are doing to drive our infection rates down? In Leicester, I welcome the extra testing capacity that we have received as a city, including the door-to-door -door testing, and I want to put on record uh, my tribute to the people of Leicester, the city where I live, for their fortitude in doing all we can to drive this infection down now through 17 weeks of lockdown. We still have to make, if we still have to make further personal sacrifice to keep people safe and hunt this virus down with the lockdown, then so be it. But there is no question there will be a degree of dismay across the city uh, in response to the Secretary of State's remarks. We welcome the uh, opening of non-essential retail, but there are many businesses who were, were preparing to open their doors for the beginning of July who are still cannot open their doors, and they will want to know whether they will get any specific extra business support. The Secretary of State suggested uh, in the previous statement that they would. The business, sec uh, the business minister ruled it out. The continued lockdown coincides with the traditional Leicester fortnight. I don't know if the Secretary of State is familiar with the Leicester fortnight. It's the two weeks in July where our schools break up earlier than other schools across the country, uh, and it's a time when many Leicester families will have booked holidays. But, of course, they can't go on holiday because they're not allowed to, and many travel companies are refusing to, to uh, pay them compensation uh, and so on. So can he guarantee that, that they will not be out of pocket because they are not allowed to go on a holiday that they've saved up all year, for, for all year round? Can he, the government step in or can he force those travel companies to reimburse those Leicester families? As you know, Leicester is a city that suffers from high levels of child poverty, insecure work, low pay, lack of decent sick pay. We have many deep-rooted economic problems, and the spike in the city, or the, bit, the larger outbreak in the city, seems, appears to coincide with these inner-city areas where we know there's high levels of de deprivation and uh, uh, over overcrowded. We also know we have a large ethnic minority community, so can he explain why he's not yet implemented the recommendations of the Public Health England report into protecting those from minority ethnic backgrounds. And of course, there has been widespread speculation about the garment industry. Uh, can he tell us how many HSE inspections and how many HMRC inspections have now taken place in Leicester's textiles factories, particularly since the Home Secretary a couple of weeks ago promised us she would stamp out any illegal exploitation? We note that he has rejected the advice of the city mayor of Leicester to partially ease restrictions in parts of the city, although he's taken advice from the leader of Leicestershire County Council to ease restrictions in part of the county. Could he perhaps explain what the public health uh, evidence is behind that decision? Because if the public health advice uh, is to maintain, for example, the lockdown in the west of the city, when we know the infection rates are at their highest in the east of the city, why does that not advice also apply to the neighbourhoods that border the city boundaries? This is one greater urban area. So what is the public health reason why someone in one side of Gilmorton Avenue, I don't expect him to know Gilmorton Avenue in my constituency, but it illustrates the point. What is the public health reason why one per, when, a, when someone living on one side of that avenue is now subject to restrictions because they fall under Leicester City Council, but they presumably are not allowed to cross the road now to speak to their neighbour who lives opposite them because they fall under Blaby District Council. There are other examples across the city as well. Uh, so if he could offer us that advice, I think we would appreciate it. Now, of course, Leicester uh, went into lockdown because, uh, uh, because of the infection rate and because it took so long for us to get us 
the specific data. Local authorities are still complaining that they are not getting the patient identifiable data and they are not getting data on a daily basis and they are not getting contact tracing data. The Prime Minister yesterday at Prime Minister's Questions said we have a world leading system, the best system in the world with testing and tracing and it will avoid a second spike this winter. But we know there have been problems with this testing and tracing throughout. Last week it was revealed that he has been overstating the test numbers by 200,000. Sky News revealed that. Today he's come to the House and we're grateful for him updating the House uh, about what's happening with Randox. I believe this is a £133 million contract that was given to Randox with no, without any competitive tender. Could he just explain what is exactly wrong with these kits? How many of these presumably faulty kits have been used? Is there a health risk to anyone who has been tested with these kits? 